Hey guys, I'm Ollie from JTV. Today I'm going for a walk in the park with Rabbi Jonathan Rietti. Now he's a very interesting man. His father was a man called Robert Rietti. He only died uh, two years ago. Robert Rietti was quite a famous actor. He was in films like The Italian Job, some James Bond films. And for some reason or another, this man, Rabbi Jonathan, decided to become a rabbi later in his life. So I want to talk to him a little bit about his story. And also, he focuses a lot in his lectures on character development. So I want to talk to him a little bit about that. Let's go. Okay, Rabbi, so how does someone go from living in a not particularly religious household, uh, having a very famous actor as a father, to becoming a very religious, orthodox uh, rabbi, as opposed to a non-religious rabbi? Right. You know who you are. <laughs> How did that happen? So, um, in my particular case, I became religious around about 11 years old. Um, it's, it's a long story, but it was really a personal miracle that happened to me that uh, triggered it off. Uh -huh. So, uh, I have twin sisters. At the time, they were nine, eight and a half, nine years old, and I was about ten. Just a little bit more than a year between us. And I would get into fights all the time, I would tease them and I would get into trouble because I'm the oldest, I should know better. I have to set an example. So it was the firstborn syndrome, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I remember one night I couldn't take it anymore. Um, so I was just trying to figure out how can I possibly save myself from this situation. I've got two sisters I'll never be able to get rid of. Um, so I actually did consider killing one of them. <laughs> That's you know, like 10 year olds think like that sometimes. Okay. I even knew which weapon I was going to use and Go which, on. which sister. <laughs> but uh, we, won't, we won't publicize that. Okay. And you just did. <laughs> I won't publicize which sister. Okay, okay. Um, but I realized my parents wouldn't see the funny side of it if I knocked one of them off. But it just made sense that it would be one against one instead of two against one because they're twins. Right. Um, so I found myself for the first time in my life uh, praying to God out of total desperation. And I said, God, I'll make a deal with you. If, if you give me a brother that'll even up two against two, then I'll be a good Jew. Uh -huh. I didn't understand what a, the definition of a good Jew is or would be, um, and I didn't realize how easy it would be for God to provide a brother. Uh -huh. But I did make the deal a little bit harder in order for me to know that God was listening to my prayer and not that my mother had another child, even though she hadn't had any children in, in this time nine years. Uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a deal. If you give me a brother on my birthday, then I'll be a good Jew. On your birthday? Yeah. Why specifically on your birthday? Because then the, the but mathematical... But you know it came from God? Yeah, that way I would know he was answering my prayer because the likelihood of number one being a brother and my mother having another child and it being born on my birthday, I felt that was enough to convince me that it was in response to a particular request as, okay. a, as opposed to it just happening. Okay. So I totally forgot about the entire incident. I do remember crying so much that uh, I felt the tears on my pillow. Really? So that, that sensation I still, I still remember. But about three months later, mm. um, we were going to Devon on a train for um, our holiday. Mm. And my mother announced that she was expecting. And I immediately blurted out, it's a boy. So I completely remembered my request, which I'd totally forgotten. Right. And then they said, well, how would you know? This is pre-sonograms. So I told them that I'd made a deal with God and that he was going to be born on my birthday. I was absolutely certain of it. And really? yeah, my mother was very worried. I only really learned later on because she, she was raised in a religious family in Iraq, uh -huh. in Baghdad. I was told that she you should be- You Iraqi? No. I'm Italian, really, on my father's side. Okay. Have you been back to visit Baghdad? No. No? I told her she should have been born in Baghdad, mum, but she was born in Baghdad. <laughs> and uh, she Such a had a lot of... Such a corny dad joke. What? That's a corny dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> she had um, a lot of very simple emuna, very simple conviction that God exists. And she was very worried that if God didn't give me a brother on my birthday, I would lose my faith. Right. So... Um, I was born early March, and she was actually due March, in early March. Okay. Uh, my excuse for why my brother was born early is because, and this is actually true, a doctor called in to explain he had a medical conference in Europe. Uh -huh. 
and that if she wanted him to deliver, then he would induce her early. Um, but if she had confidence in his team, then they'll wait till the baby was ready. Uh -huh. So she preferred her doctor. So that's how my brother was born before the, uh, my birthday. Okay. So she was tempting fate. But it was, it was so close, there was only a couple of days difference. I said to myself, you know, God, you really, you did your best. So I counted it, but I didn't know what to do about my part of the bargain uh, until mm. a couple of years later. So just um, you didn't lose faith at that. You kind of felt happy with what God had done. Yeah, it was, I had a brother. I, I, you know what, when I prayed for a brother, I had no clue that by the time he'd be born, to, he'd be totally useless to me. I, I would have grown out of teasing my sisters right. and he couldn't play soccer with me. Right. So it, it, everything was, was a mess, but I really yeah. enjoyed having him. I used to change his uh, nappy and feed him, uh, get him to sleep at night as a, as a small child, as, literally as an infant. I felt um, kind of responsible for bringing him into the world. So, wow. Um, wow, so you always felt almost as if you were a parent to this, this yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. So years later, I'm turning 13 and I had a couple of friends in my class as a non-Jewish school, um, half a mile away from here, King Alfred School mm -hmm. in Hampstead. Uh, who had bar mitzvahs and it was so lavish and they were getting money and checks and presents not by today's standards but you know they would get a that's what bar mitzvahs are all about no one yeah told you. so i told my parents i really want a bar mitzvah <laughs> so they took me to the synagogue that we belong to uh, that we actually i actually did go there i think it was twice a year there was a fashion show i think it was roshan and yom kippur um we went for <laughs> Um, I didn't realize actually it's a real service, but it, it seems I thought it was a fashion show at the time. So uh, the rabbi of the shul, who was my rabbi for many years afterwards, mm. uh, Rabbi Abraham Levy, mm -hmm. um, he said, I'm sorry, but we don't, we don't do bar mitzvahs in our shul unless you pass a test. So I was really desperate for uh, the presence. So I was willing to pass the test and um, he gave me a list of books to read. And you have to understand, I wasn't into reading this pre-Harry Potter, so I really forced myself to, to read these books, and I was shocked. These were books about Judaism, and no one told me that Love Your Neighbors Yourself was Jewish. I thought that it was a Christian invention, and then it quotes the five books of Moses, the Old Testament, uh, Leviticus chapter 19. I said, That's, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, then the Ten Commandments, turns out it was, the movie was based on the book. And... Um, um, Honoring your parents, oh, that's Jewish. Uh, the concept of a Sabbath, oh, that's Jewish. Uh, um, I didn't realize we were actually persecuted amongst other reasons under the Roman Empire for being a lazy nation because we took off one day in seven. And now we're living in the Western... Takes two days off in the Western That takes world, two days off. And yeah. so uh, I was thinking, why didn't anyone tell me this? Um, we, we invented giving charity and taking care of the poor, mm. taking care of the almana of a, a widow and an orphan. So it bothered me that I'm Jewish. No one told me all this. Judaism has made such a, a massive contribution to, to mankind. So that stirred in me the, the vision that I had originally made a commitment to. Okay, so I want right. to be a good Jew, so I have to do something about this. Right. Um, then as my bar mitzvah came and went, I was the only kid in my bar mitzvah class. There was about 13 of us. Um, boys and girls that continued going every Thursday night to Rabbi Levy's class. I used to bike every Thursday religiously. Um, and I just asked him all my questions. And this went on for years. Mm. And then around about um, two years later, he said, you know, you're the only one who continued from that class. And I'm curious, all the other kids, their interest was in movies and movie stars and your father's in the w world of the film industry and you've worked with him in, in dubbing and revoicing um, parts in, in movies and whatnot. Mm. And they're not interested in Judaism because they're interested in the world of films mm. and you're in the world of films but you're interested in Judaism. So he said, well, how is that? Mm. So I told him the truth was the starting point was really uh, the request that I made to God. Your baby brother, yeah. yeah. So he heard my story right to the end and he said, Jonathan, help me to understand something. If God is going to give you a brother on your birthday, would he give it to you on your Christian birthday or your Jewish birthday? So I said, I, I don't, don't really follow because I didn't understand that the Jewish calendar was different. Right. It follows the lunar cycles. And 
or a combination of the solar and lunar. Mm. So he asked me for my birthday. I told him March 6th, uh, 1959. And he, he took out this book called the Jewish Yearbook. It has a long list of, of uh, dates and the corresponding Jewish date. Mm. And his finger landed on the 26th of Adar. And um, then I gave him my brother's birthday and his finger landed on the 26th of Adar. Oh, wow. So that's... Oh, my gosh. When I realized, okay, now I, owe, now I really owe you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that, that, that was... That's unbelievable. That was the genesis of my, if you want to call it, religious career. Um, but I was, I'd already started keeping certain things like Shabbat. Right. So I was in Hampstead. So, so it wasn't dependent on... This no, but you, you asked know, me where it miracle. started. This is where it started, yeah. because some people will say, you know, well, I don't see those miracles. I don't see God in my life like the right. way you did. Or perhaps you, they could say, well, that just it just happened to be that way. Right. So, what would you say to people who say, who say, you know, I don't see those kind of things? So, why should I be interested? Um, I don't. I don't share this story. I don't volunteer it. If people ask me, I'll share it. But I'm sharing it because people have asked me. How did I become religious? Right. But not because I'm using that as a Template. platform for right. people to then consider. Oh, um, so God exists. Right. I'm just saying that that's what. That's what happened to you. I yeah. made a deal, and I felt compelled to keep my part of it. Yeah. Um, so you can argue. Well, mathematically, it is possible that you would have a brother, and it's possible he was born. He has to be born on one day of the year out of 365. Yeah. Um, but. In my particular case, I asked for one, and I asked for it on my, on my birthday, so, so, you, yeah, yeah. so for me it was a personal miracle. I, I, yeah. That's why I call it a personal miracle. Okay. 